Hello and welcome. In this presentation I will be looking into recurrence relations and it is an introduction to my Year 12 BCE for the Math students on the new module that's been introduced this year. Now, a sequence can be thought of pretty much as a number pattern with rules that define each term. So, you can see here, the two number patterns we'll be looking at in particular will be a linear sequence where each term basically increases or decreases by the same amount or what's known as a geometric sequence where we multiply each term by the same value. Now, we will be looking at linear growth or decay for that matter and for linear growth we need to consider a starting point. Typically it's a value and it's given this subscript here of zero to indicate it's the initial value. And then we need to know the rule to find our next term. In other words, how much am I increasing by? And I'm increasing by a value of three. So I take this term here, add three to it to end up with five. Take five, add three, and I end up with eight. That is basically a recurrence relation. We can say that our next term, so our nth plus oneth term equals our current term, the nth term, plus three. And if we actually happen to have decay, then the value of d is negative. Yeah. This particular sequence can be applied quite simply on your calculator. So I'm just going to minimize this screen for a minute, show you how to do this on my TI Inspire. So here's my calculator. Now I need to start, take my starting point, which is 2. So I take 2, and then to add 3 to that, plus 3 enter and you'll see what happens each time I hit enter takes the answer from the previous calculation and adds 3 and so on and so on and so on it's fairly straightforward now back to full screen moving on to our next slide now if I was looking at an example of this now let's look at the example where Say I have $75 in a piggy bank and I add $25 every week. And I wish to know how many weeks will it take before my piggy bank contains $200. Well, I can th think of this as just a number sequence and then come up with a rule for that. So, the rule that I have is the value or the amount of money in my piggy bank after n weeks will be how much did I actually start with plus the number of weeks multiplied by how much it's gone up each week. So I need to consider how much did I have there originally? Well, $75. Also, how much am I going up? What's my increase? It's $25. So, just writing down all the values of my knowns, I have value that I'm looking for, $200. 75 is what I start with. 25 is my increment. I could look to plug all those into the, the equation here, the rule, and then solve for n. And you can see n equals 5. Likewise, I could just say, well, I start at 75 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fairly straightforward, fairly trivial, but you can see by applying the recurrence rule and plugging in the values of what I do know, 
I can solve for the value of n of what I do not know. Okay, we have another five slides to get through. Now, geometric growth basically is where we're increasing not by adding but by multiplying. So again, consider the starting point. I start, my initial value is 2. And how do I go from one term to the next? What's the rule? There you go, I multiply by 3. And we can say that for this recurrence relation, the value of my next term equals 3 times the value of my current term. So in other words, if my current term is 6, the value of my next term would be 3 times my current term. And should note, you probably mentioned this a few times over the next few slides, for growth, the value of R has to be greater than 0. And for decay, the value of R is less than 0. Now, likewise, I could do this on my calculator. So let's start with 2, and we will continually multiply that by 3. So just minimize this. Just tuck you away, don't really need you. So, starting with 2, enter. And then what I need to do, for each time, I need to multiply that answer by 3. Enter. And then if I just hit enter again, it will take the 6 and apply the previous op operation, which was multiplying by 3. So there you go. Then it'll be 18 times 3 then 54 times 3, and so on and so forth. So, let's make that full screen again. Moving to our next slide. Okay. Now let, look at this example here. I initially have $3 in a piggy bank and decide to double the amount of money it contains every week. How many weeks before it will contain $1,000? So, Start with 3, I will double it to get 6. Just have the 6, double it, end up with 12. 6, so take the 12, multiply by 2, 18. Well, there's a bit of problem with the maths there. Take the 12, multiply by 2, that should be 24. Okay, never mind, we will keep moving forward. So, we need to consider the rule for geometric growth. The value of my nth term will be r to the value of n multiplied by my initial value. So let's look to see what our values of r and our initial value is. So my initial value is where I start with three, three dollars. And what's my r? My r is my multiplying factor and each time I multiply by 2. So, putting in the values of my knowns and initially, Vn is $1,000. 0 is 3, R is 2. So, I need to basically solve for this equation here. 2 to the value of what, multiplied by my initial value of 3, will give me $1,000. Yeah. You can solve this using your TI Inspire, using the solve function. Just in the, just the, I suppose, in the economics of time, we'll leave that to another date because this is just an introduction. Now, both examples, well, one example can looked at linear growth and the other one looked at geometric growth growth. Now, some more comprehensive examples looking at interest rates and the like will be up, will be presented in upcoming video clips. Now, what we'll be specifically we'll be looking at? Linear growth. Now, the rule, the recurrence rule for linear growth, Vn equals V0 plus N multiplied by D, 
and example the main example of linear growth is that of simple interest linear decay notice here the only difference is the D is negative and examples of linear decay flat rate depreciation and unit cost depreciation we will look into those in a few, little bit more detail in upcoming videos then we have up then we have geometric growth this is a situation where we have r to the power of n multiplied by my initial value so the biggest example of that would be compound interest and then we have geometric decay this is where r is a value less than one and the best example that we have there is reducing balance depreciation so over the next 10 videos we will be looking to apply these rules these rules up here to a, to solve basic problems in this space here so until next time good maths and bye for now